first things first, I wanted to get a look at my guy Elephant Graveyard. So Elephant Graveyard's got a new video at the moment. The new video from Elephant Graveyard is called Last Gasp, I think for relevancy or something like that. So I'm going to react to this live and direct with you guys today. I'm sure most of you have already seen it. It's called Last Gasp of the Redacted, featuring Brendan Shaw, Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, and Burt Kreischer, courtesy of the one and only Elephant Graveyard. So let's check out Elephant Graveyard's new video. Let's check out Elephant Graveyard's new blood clot video. We caught this opali off a jetty in Marina Del Rey. And no joke, we saw a trash bag <laughs> floating by. We saw a used condom, a giant used condom. <laughs> and God almighty, look, even he's, I know this has been like color corrected and maybe it's been oversaturated and shit, but even his hands, he's got dirty fingernails. The fish looks like it's been, he's got it out of the back of it. He's got it from his back pocket or something, you know, like, He's put fish in his back pocket and then taking it out in his hand and then tried to uh, yucky, yucky, yuck. I froze this for a couple of days and I thawed it out for him. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that carcass. Look at that flipping debris. Look at that horrendous shit that's on there. Look, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. God damn. God damn. Half days, now three days probably. The question of free will touches nearly everything we care about. Most of what is distinctly human about our lives seems to depend upon our viewing one another as autonomous persons, capable of free choice. But free will is an illusion. Our wills are simply not of our own making. Thoughts and intentions emerge from background causes of which we are unaware and over. Look at Elephant Graveyard getting all philosophical on us, yeah? Elephant Graveyard with that philosophy thing, yeah? That smart thing, yeah? That above double-digit IQ thing, yeah? Three-digit IQ thing, yeah? All right, cool. Introspection thing, yeah? All right, cool. Which we exert no conscious control. Don't you ever wonder why you are what you are? Never. I mean, don't you ever just look around at your life and think, what the hell even is any of this Not shit? Not really. How did I actually get here? What the I love hell it. am I even doing? So good. For instance, how does one become a stand-up comedian? I wonder that all the well, time. You must first be born with an intact <laughs> nervous system and then provided with a proper education. No freedom there. And at some point, you must decide to become a comedian. A result, presumably, of first wanting to become one. But from where does that want arise? Not from you, but from the result of an inexplicable combination of events and forces that you will never understand. To become a comedian, you must also have the talent for the job. And this is this is something that I realize is a um, misnomer and a false falsehood when it comes to stand-up comedy. I've covered enough stand-up on this channel. I know it's only a very small, you know, it's a very small sample size. And obviously most of these guys are redacted anyway. But I have to say, from the time that I've started the random show and from the time I've started talking about these stand-up comedians, one thing I've realized, similar to DJing, in my opinion, I know some of you guys don't agree with this analogy, but I think stand-up comedy is very similar to DJing in that everybody can do it. Anybody can be a DJ. There's MIDI software now that you can download and use on your laptop. You can download DJ software for your phone. So the barrier of entry is super low. Same thing goes for the stand-up comedy. As long as you've got the confidence or the courage to go up on stage and talk in front of people, you can basically do stand-up. So because of that barrier of entry being so low, and I guess, yeah, the barrier of entry being so low, it invites a lot of people to start. And because of it, I think it gets it gets um inundated with loads of people that are terrible. So I think the majority of DJs are terrible. The majority of stand-up comedians are terrible because it's just the nature of the game. So you have to kind of find the good ones in in all that flipping muck, in all that crowded room. You have to kind of sort through all the good ones. That's probably why at the moment, especially with that LA comedy crowd and stuff, they're also like pally pally and pat each other on the back and stuff because it's the only way they can get gigs to kind of circle jerk each other because when it comes to pure, as in 
ha ha he he laughability of these stand-up comedians is not very high. So they're not going to sell you on the quality of their co- on their comedy, but what they'll sell you is on their relatability, on their like podcast humor and shit. It's never really about the stage. Like think about all your favorite stand-ups. Most of them aren't really great. You know, most of them you don't like them because of their stand-up. You like them because of their personality on the podcast more so. There are some exceptions, but I think for the most part, most stand-up comedians are terrible in the same way most top DJs are terrible. But again, I could be wrong. Develop the best brains for the art. Becoming a comic requires effort. You must do many things deliberately and well and in the appropriate sequence year after year. But will you be the conscious source of this wanting? Will you be responsible for its... The way Joe Rogan talks about Whitney Cummings and then you see her actual stand-up, you're like, and that's the thing about Whitney. I think Whitney is way funnier, way sharper, um, just a little bit more of a of a pleasure to listen to when she's on the podcast. Even though she's a bit, you know, she can be a little bit exhausting and shit. She has a little bit of the Burt Kreischerism about her as well, right? With the flipping, you know, delusion um, of grandeur and whatever it may be. But I think in general, she's way more, she's way funnier on a pod than she's on stage. When she gets on stage, it's like, who the fuck is that? Prevailing over all the other things you want? No. If you succeed at becoming a comedian, you will suddenly one day find yourself standing on stage, microphone in hand, at the confluence of all the genetic and environmental causes. Man, look at that stage. Honestly, Brendan, what a big fuck up, man. That might have to be one of the biggest fumbles of all fumbles, but it's a really good learning. It's a really good, um, what you call it? Um, what's that fucking term? Cautionary tale, Brendan Shaw, in 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 as like to not to half ass things, not to take opportunities for granted, because he was handed it on a silver plate. Showtime special. Look at that stage. Look at the big letters behind him with his surname lit up and stuff. Like, look at it. That's a professional stand up fucking stage at the highest level. Two years in, and then to go from that to that fucking cardboard cutout of the skyline on Gringo Papi. Like, god damn, how the mighty have fallen. That led you to the or how the redacted have fallen. Fell up along this line. Look, he couldn't. He couldn't believe it himself. Look at his face. He couldn't believe it himself. Like, how the fuck did I get up on here? But he should. He should have continued faking it till you make it. This is when fake it till you make it should go into overdrive. You fake it till you make it on that sort of stage, but then you need to back it up. You need to come come back again. More jokes, more banter, more jokes, more banter, more specials. Work out your act. Work on your act. Hire fucking writers. Do whatever needs to be done to keep us up at that level because the fall off is going to be crazy. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, is a progressive brain disorder caused by repeated head injuries that leads to cognitive decline, including impaired decision making, unstable impulsive behavior, drug and alcohol addiction, memory loss, and problems planning carrying out tasks. Thank God he stopped drinking alcohol, by the way. He looks far better now. There's more combat. CTE symptoms can appear at any time following traumatic brain injury, and the condition only worsens over time, eventually leading to a full-on detachment from reality. We do not have the freedom we think we have. Just as within a circuit, an electron follows the path of least resistance, so too do human beings. And there's no telling where you'll end up. Verizon guy, 449 Quebec X-ray. Hey, uh, I found myself in a bit of a predicament. I'm in the air right now. 449, are you not supposed to be on that aircraft? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you just take off? Jesus yeah. Christ. And you're not supposed to be on that aircraft? Uh, no. But what's going on? Are you flying the plane? Yeah. Usually these <laughs> bad... <laughs> hey, little graveyard, you're too much, man. <laughs> Ah, this is fucking crazy. This correlation, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, but yeah, big up Elephant Graveyard. It's a predictable oh, and stable. Things go about doing what they ought to. There's a moment where it changes. Boom! But the universe, given its infinite vastness, sometimes manifests into reality what we call karmic mutations. Coincidental waves of cause and effect that lead to circumstances that appear to make no rational sense. Yeah, so you hijack the plane is what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I've been a kind of a bad thing, kind of a selfish thing. Jesus Christ, man.
Jesus Christ, brother. Just a broken guy, got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. This isn't a sad thing. Think we're trying to do a barrel roll? Time to go nose down and call it a night. How we doing, my man? Another shot for the road? No, I probably shouldn't, man. I'm shooting my first comedy special tonight. How long you been doing it? Three years. Suppose your hero and mentor insisted to you that you should become a stand-up comedian. And so you do it. Is that your own conscious choice? Or have you just been persuaded? And would he then be responsible for whatever terrible fate would surely await you in that pursuit? Ladies and gentlemen, from the Fighter and the Kid podcast and below the belt on Showtime, give it up for the great and powerful Mr. Brandon Shaw! To be fair to Joe Rogan, as much as I, as much as I don't like the way he treated Brendan towards the end, because I feel like, you know, he kind of honey-dicked Rogan, he kind of honey-dicked Brendan. He had him involved in stand-up. He welcomed him into his inner circle, right? He did all that flipping good shit to him, gave him spots at the comedy store. Then as soon as he moved to Austin, he suddenly got standards. He suddenly was like, you know what? I can't endorse this terrible shit. And now he hasn't kind of given him a spot at the comedy mothership, even though he's given all his friends spots, right? It's fucking, it's a bit sad in that regard. But to be fair to Brent Rogan, he never said, I, I can't think of a moment or a video or a clip or an instance where Rogan said, Brendan Schaub is a funny stand-up comedian. I can't remember. Even that introduction, the great and powerful Brendan Schaub. He didn't say, big up my friend, my buddy, the funny, the hilarious Brendan Schaub. He's never once said, Brendan's funny on stage or as a stand-up. Never. So maybe he always knew, but he was trying to like, you know, he was biding his time hoping that Brendan would get better, hoping he would kind of, you know, start working on his act, hoping the writing would get tighter, hoping, 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 hoping. Then when it didn't happen, he was like, you know what, I can't do anything more. And just kind of, you know, kind of like took his hands off from it. But I still find it a little bit out of order how he hasn't given, just giving him a charity gig. Just give him a little, a little, okay, cool. Just because you're my boy. Because God damn it, man. It's got to be so embarrassing to be the only person in that fucking Joe Rogan crew who hasn't got a set, who didn't get booked at the Comedy Mothership, um, despite you being one of the fucking, you know, core guys. I think, if I'm not mistaken, even Eddie Bravo has performed at the Comedy Mothership. I swear to God. And Eddie Bravo does like stand up here and there. He, he's been doing it for a while, don't get me wrong. But he doesn't do it like all the time. I think Eddie Bravo's fucking performed at the Comedy Mothership, but still he hasn't. Absolutely horrendous and at, at this pace more than likely Chris D'Elia will get to perform on that stage before he does and Chris D'Elia has got fucking diddling allegations against his name can you imagine that I mean come on look at this this doesn't make any sense look at him stop deluding yourself these mutations are inherently unstable and eventually the great cosmic gardener goes by many names and takes on many forms, comes along to pluck the anomaly out of existence. Don't be such a fucking They get to this spot where you know, everyone knows there's something wrong and no one says anything. You see the deterioration and no one steps in and then I talk to him alone, man. Yeah, I wonder what happened there. What happened with that, what, what happened with that alone, what happened with that alone, alone, alone conversation? What happened? Was that a conversation where Brendan said, hey, my daughter's going through some issue? Was that the conversation where Rogan said to him, hey, no mother shit for you in the future? I wonder what that conversation was about. Because it was very odd. Like, hey, Brendan, do you need to come to the toilet too? But I was like, yeah, I need to go to the toilet too. And they went off and had some talk. It's like, couldn't you have texted this to each other? Couldn't you have called each other? Who knows? But maybe Bro Rogan wanted to have a face-to-face. -face. But something happened. Something weird happened there. We'll find out probably later on. You know, Brendan is a bit of a loud mouth. You'll definitely tell us. There's something has to be done. Like now, you gotta get out of it. Anyone can do comedy. You just, you might not be able to. Like you, look, you might not have it in you. How many fucking professional stand-ups are there? <laughs> this side-by-side -side is hilarious. This side-by-side -side is hilarious. There's only like a thousand of us on earth. There's yeah. so fucking few. What do you want, the art form to die off? You gotta stop. The job is to quit touring. Sharp retired from comedy. Yeah, you know, I have to cancel Austin and Nashville. Usually I hate doing that. I think this time I just don't care. You had so many possibilities. You know, I have a weird relationship with uh, social media and that stuff. A lot of negativity. You are starting to flourish. You're hilarious on podcasts. What, you know, that could just, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. Lost all faith in social media viewers now oopsie persuaded again we do not have the freedom we think we have 
Take, for example, Charles Whitman, an unassuming man with no history of violence who suddenly, one day in 1969, climbed to the top of the clock tower at University of Texas Austin campus. Charles spent 90 minutes indiscriminately firing upon the helpless campus crowd, killed 17 people, and wounded 31 before being felled by a shotgun blast to the head from a police officer. Damn. His autopsy revealed a significant brain tumor that had been pressing <laughs> on his amygdala, the part of the brain responsible. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> For anxiety and the fight or flight he reflex. He murdered harder than I've ever seen Whoopsie. you kill before. No freedom. It's like Again. a different person. <clears throat> I was surrounded by you, Callan, Bert, Tom. I wanted to be in that party. I was I was so fortunate. I get the stars aligned for me. I didn't really Man, the times that man that it, he must he must really cry himself to sleep at sometimes, isn't it? What a good time to be alive. He, he really take it for granted. Or maybe <clears throat> Brennan should have been smart and just move to Austin anyway. Fuck it. Move to Austin and just hope by being there a lot. That Rogan just like gets worn down and he books shit at Comedy Mothership. Maybe that was the way to go. But he probably, you know, I, I doubt his wife probably would have wanted to leave LA. But that would have probably been the long term goal. If you wanted to stick with stand up, just move to Austin. Fuck it. Just move to Austin. Try and ingratiate yourself in the community. Try and become like um, an extended member of the fucking Kill Tony crew. Just try something just to kind of keep that tether to Rogan alive. Um, but, you know, he didn't. And here's where, here we are. Here we are at the moment that that was the golden age we took it for granted those days are over man and it's heartbreaking what did you do the direction you took popes swami snake hammers all feeding at the same trial whose idea is who made that yeah i had to cancel austin and nashville usually i hate doing that i think this time i just don't care when you quit you you have to find meaning in your life like what did, what are you good at now just focus on family do my thing Unexpected problems? Good. Good. Don't get startled. Don't get frustrated. No. Get up, dust off, recalibrate, re engage, reload, and go out on the attack. What's up, guys? I'm Brendan Chop. Yeah. Welcome to the channel. Yeah. This is Toontown. Oh, for fuck's sake. You gotta like the page, subscribe to the page, Toontown. also email right here. When Look are at you the stars. Yeah. This, Brendan. Toontown. So like, subscribe <laughs> in the comment section. That's so good. Look at who, look at look at that. Like and subscribe all over the gap. Fuck you know. Tune Town. Seriously, what are you doing? Tune Town? Let us know what you want to see. Is that... Let us know. Let us know. Some brilliant car. Not let us know. Let us know. I'm going to ask a bit. What happened to building fish tanks? What do you want to see? <laughs> let us know. Why don't you just Where's show me fish? something? Isn't right. that how it's supposed to work? What made you go and be like, all right, I'm going to bomb forever? <laughs> uh, well, bomb forever is interesting. Let's do it. Bomb forever is fucking hilarious. He didn't mean it that way. He meant it more so like, hey, what made you decide to go down a career path that has a lot of resistance? There's a lot of failure. You do bomb a lot when you start stand up. It's kind of like what they ask regular comedians. But Brendan got so fucking triggered and butt hurt because he probably does bomb a lot and was like, well, bomb forever is so interesting. Was like, that was so brutal, man. Bomb forever. Dude, I think you're with a Latina, bro. You know why? Because they're fun and they're <laughs> nice, right? You know, now that you're out, you, you see it, right? The ego that I had at the time, that ego's insane. The narcissist oh, my, my girl's grandma died. Stage four pancreatic cancer. You know, what are you going to do? I pumped her full of CBD. Then she passed away last night. Good. Game, set, match. And, uh, yeah, Grim Reaper came knocking on the door in Chicago. Grim Reaper came and knocking. Imagine that's how you describe your grandmother-in-law passing away. The Grim Reaper came and knocking. <laughs> it's the circle of life. You're out. Good. Charles left a note saying, quote, I don't really understand myself these days. I am supposed to be an average, reasonable, and intelligent young man. However, lately, I have been a victim of many unusual and irrational thoughts. These thoughts constantly recur. You never see a bald Native American. That's a legit That's point. You know, yeah, I, the only true. time you see them bald if they get scalped. You feel me? Connie's just different. It's just I've seen a lot of bald Native Americans. You've seen a lot of, no, you've seen a lot of bald Indians. What are you doing? <laughs> After my death, I wish that an autopsy would be performed on me. 
to see if there is any visible physical disorder. I told you to take care of your wife. What did I say? See in those pictures. Remember? Oh, yeah. It's public for What did you do? Suppose you felt inadequate your entire life, restless, knowing you're repulsive and without value. Disgusting. And all you wanted was to be liked. Nope. Suddenly you stumped. Fuck. He actually looks kind of cute here, isn't it? But with those piercing blue eyes, right? He kind of looks kind of cute here. Upon a neat little trick that gets. And then, then suddenly you see that, you're like, whoa, jump scare. People don't want to be around you. The downside is that trick will slowly kill you over time. You follow that instinct all the way to your own grave. I still think he's gonna outlive everybody. I'm not sure if you guys agree with me, but I still think Burt Crusher is one of those type of people. We all have those people in our lives, usually family members, who are just who just get away with it. They drink, they drink themselves to sleep. They take loads of drugs. They're always smoking. They eat really unhealthy, unhealthily, but they manage to just stay alive, even though they don't do anything to kind of stave off. Or to kind of, you know, keep themselves in moderation. They just end up staying alive. So I think Burt's one of the type of people. Burt's going to probably end up outliving fucking Joe Rogan. Watch. Just you watch. Just you watch. Just you watch. Not your choice, though. Oopsie. Rest in peace. Suppose you were born into immense wealth. But on the outside, you look like a disgusting, cringe slob oh. who nobody respects. Oh, that's bad. Would you cope with the rejection of the world by convincing yourself you are actually better than everyone else because you've got that lovely trust fund? A wonderful fund. And if you finally manage to build up the admiration of the public, Ooh, la, la. you sabotage your own success by hanging on to that old cope? and eventually being exposed as a toxic person and losing it all. Fuck. Rest in peace. Just another oops. <laughs> right? Yeah. If, for example, a boy was denied love and affect... Fuck, you know, look at Rogan. Rogan used to be a dimey, 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 innit? All that HGH definitely has adverse... Of, like, I guess HGH is like a... It's like a... It's like a... It's like a you know, pros and cons. You take HGH and you take other steroids and most likely you're going to be ripped until the age of like 60, 70 plus, right? But unfortunately, the cons are your face is going to w morph into like a thumb as Joe looks now, right? Where his head kind of morphs into his neck. It's all kind of one thing. But you get to look really ripped. So that's the issue. Like, what do you want? Do you want to be ripped or do you want to have a cute face? as a child and instead received frequent allegations of homosexuality from his violent father Joe knows he's sweet and he's got sugar in his hand. would that lead him to a lifetime of trying to reconcile his manhood unhinged addiction <laughs> to extreme exercise hormone replacement therapy becoming a male to male trans man desperate for the external validation of other men <laughs> mom really should have bought those steaks only to transform his own body into a grotesque monster and he knows that he can't be a dog. And becoming an icon to a legion of unfuckable losers, even more desperate for. Imagine getting a tattoo of. Honestly, some of these. I don't think I've ever loved another man that much to get a tattoo of them. Even me growing up being a fucking Michael Jackson fan and loving him. The early nerd NERD Pharrell era. I love that. Um, Morrissey, The Smiths era. I can think of loads of bands, Slayer, when I was really into Slayer back in the day when I was growing up and shit, my Slipknot phase I had. There's been plenty of people who I could have probably got a tattoo of and it would have made sense when I was young, but I can't do it. I can't put my, I can't just go through with it. So imagine being a grown ass man and getting a tattoo of fucking Rogan on your body. Like you have to be a, such a big redact, like, you know, like imagine what, but then I guess it's worth the it's worth the pain it's worth the embarrassment because rogan will tag you and post your picture on his instagram right so you know father figure than he is what's sadder when you run into a guy you used to do comedy like you don't do comedy anymore you run into guys and like you don't do comedy anymore no, producer now or no Dude. i'm just like I'm, yeah i'm not quitting i just i just you don't do comedy I'm, no, I'm, just, now. I'm not going to toronto i'm not going to the you east don't do comedy really sad. especially if they had at least one good set yeah, yeah. Like, no i'm not going to the east coast could have figure or maybe even a special or two yeah. Yeah. this is a long life we got we're gonna do this forever <laughs> I've said next week. Jim, did you ever hear me say I quit comedy? No. 
No. No. I just juggle a million things. What yeah. happened? Where were you guys? Oh my god. I lost. Oh man, you gotta you gotta love you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Big up Elephant Graveyard, absolute legend. That was actually incredible. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Big up everybody tuning in. Appreciate all of you. <laughs> Young old vibes. Yeah, right. Never in a million years a fucking tattoo of Tremaine. Who do, who, who do you think I am? Who do you think I am, huh? Who do you take me for? Come on, man. Give me some respect. 